I have a lot of opinions on a lot of things, and usually I'm not afraid to let them, let them be known. But one of my opinions is about liturgical music. I, uh, you know, I spend a good amount of my time around the liturgy these days, so I should have a good opinion about liturgical music. I love the music here. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. But, you know, when it comes to Advent, the season of Advent, the season we enter of the church today, it's often said that there's no wonderful Advent hymns. But, I mean, that's false. There's great Advent hymns. We have People Look East. People look east and sing today. Love the Lord is on the way. And we have O, o Come Divine Messiah. We have Awake, O Sleeper. We have Lo, How a Rose Air Bloomin'. And that song is just beautiful about the Blessed Virgin Mary preparing for the birth of Christ. But today's opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Perhaps the greatest Advent hymn. I mean, perhaps the greatest Advent hymn because it was written after the liturgy. It was written for the liturgy of the hours, for the antiphons that begin with O, that O key of David, O saving victim, all the antiphons that begin with O that we pray in our evening prayers, religious, as priests, as deacons. It's the most beautiful hymn, but all of our Advent hymns always have one thing in common. They always have the commonality of sight trained on in them. We have beautiful Advent hymns in the church, looking through credo, the hymnals that are in all the pews. I mean, there's, if we're unsure of how to focus our prayer and unsure of how to look, we just need to crack it open. Look in the index in the back and find where it says, look. And find where it says, the coming of the Lord. Find where it says, Advent hymns. And we can be directed towards training our sight. Because that's what Advent is all about. It's not about just the preparation for Christmas, finding the right gifts. Because I will hem and I haw about finding the right gifts for my nieces and nephews. That's not the intended purpose. The intended purpose of Advent is not to make sure that the tree is perfect, to make sure that the nativity scene is in the right place. These are all stuff. We don't really have to concern our, our whole being, our whole personhood, our entire faith with the stuff of life. Stuff won't save us. Stuff doesn't come to help us in the darkness. Stuff might make us feel better for a moment, but it's stuff that occludes our vision. Yet instead, these Advent hymns, these wonderful hymns of old, O come, O come, Emmanuel, people look east, is about us training our mystic sight in order to see how the Savior comes. There's three comings that we look forward to in Advent. Three comings of Christ that we must pay attention to. The coming of Christ in history. Yes, in preparation for Christmas. How the Holy Family prepared. How the, the world was prepared by God for the reception of the Bridegroom into the world. For the Incarnation. The coming of Christ at Mass, liturgically, sacramentally, how we prepare to see Christ and to receive Him within, to oursel within ourselves. And then at the end of time, do we see the coming of Christ? How do we prepare for that coming? Advent is a time of preparation, yes. It is a time of preparing for Mass, preparing for the world, preparation of God and preparing for ourselves at the second coming, at the time then when we won't know, but we'll be called home. But now is the time, really, for mystic sight. We'll hear in the season of Advent from John the Baptist about how he could see the forecoming of Christ, how he knew the forecoming of Christ, God speaking to him and him speaking to the world. We'll hear about the Blessed Virgin Mary, about St. Joseph, how they saw God coming into the world, how they knew and were going to experience the Incarnation through seeing Him, how they could see God within their midst and they could see God especially with them. We'll hear about troubles and sorrows and joys. We'll always end with hearing how these people, how these beloved prophets saw God for them, working for their good in their midst.
The world is a messed up place, a lot. It can be. It's filled with stuff. And we're told and we're given messages all around how we need to concentrate on stuff on how we need to concentrate on filling up our lives, filling up the quiet with as much as we can gather around us to take our mind off of what's going on within us and in our church and in our world. But that is false, my brothers and sisters. We cannot for a moment take our eyes off this world, but we must sharpen our mystical sight to not be able to see the problems and chaos created in our world, but to see how God is walking with us even now, how God is for us, and how God is calling us to himself. We're given a challenge through the season of Advent. Every year we celebrate these four sacred weeks preceding the Nativity, preceding the beginning of Christmas, which lasts much longer than the world wants. We're given a challenge to retreat into our faith, to let our faith inform the way that we see the world, to let the scriptures inform us on how God has prepared the world and how the world has seen God. To challenge ourselves and say, how do I prepare for Mass and how do I see Christ coming to me at Mass? To challenge ourselves to see how I prepare for the birth of Christ, but how I, how I see the walking of Christ with me now in trial and tribulation. This is a challenge that can't be shirked away from. A challenge that we must answer first and foremost by going to the sacrament of reconciliation and seeing and hearing and feeling and being steeped within the mercy of God. Having our vision de-occluded from the world, de-stuffified from the stuff of the world so that we can train our mystic sight on what happens on this altar that happened in the incarnation that will occur at our calling home in the second coming of God. Our challenge is to see. We ask ourselves at the beginning of this Advent for God to be with us and to guide our hearts and minds throughout these these coming celebrations to help us see how he comes, how he's with us, and how he calls us to himself.